How are you all? I'm not hearing anything. Good. Can I can I hear a big shout? Good. Good. Ah, I see you guys playing and shouting and full of energy outside, but inside you are so quiet. Why? Hey, we gonna you wanna say something? Ah. we went to corpus christi you went to corpus christi wow i have been i've not been there jessie is raising her hands yeah but that's a fun place oh i read a book what chalo i read a book oh that's nice okay so i Yes, it's all super exciting fun things that you are doing the summer break, right? Good. I'm happy. So, um today we're going to meditate upon a special person, right? He's a God himself has said that he's a person after my own heart. He's my best that's like saying he's my best friend. Do you all have best friends? Who's your best friend? So what do you do with your best friends? To chat, play, do fun things, right? So God is saying, "Hey, uh, this person, right, is after my own heart. He's very close to my heart." Any guesses who that person is? Yes. David, you're right. So right. So yeah, David, a man after god's own heart right bible says that even god god has said this right after david lived and after so many years there is a person called luke who wrote the book of acts right so in the book of acts in chapter 13 verse 22 right um that's the next slide you can go to the next slide maybe Yeah your holy spirit all the verses in the bible are written through the inspiration of the holy spirit right so holy spirit has inspired luke to write this right so luke has written this what he has written say holy spirit had told him that i have found david who is a man after my heart my own heart and he's he will do my will and so god is calling david as so oh, this person is a very special person because he is very close to my heart how many you want to how many of you want to have this title that you want to be the special friend special person of god a special friend of god we all would like to be that person right even i would like to be the person hey i want to be a special friend of god a special person to god a person after god's own heart right so we going to look at what 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 do you think david would have done to earn this title what 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 do you think it's would made him to earn this title do you want to share something when maybe this is what i'm thinking in my maybe david would have done this that's what earned this title for david he was always close to god that's so right right he was always close close to god talking to god and praying any anybody else that's want to share that oh this is what i'm thinking maybe this is what david has done to earn the special title he always praises right you you said pray or praise praise that's so so right right most of the psalms that we see the book of psalms are written by david which is full of praises right he always praises god sings for god right thanks god right so he's a man of praise he's a man of worship and praise right so today we're going to look at few characters of david that i think why 
that made him a special person, a person towards God's heart, right? So, <clears throat> before that, right, what God sees, what God looks at is not your outward appearance. God did not give this title to David, right, by looking at his outward appearance, right? He looks at our heart. He looks at David's heart. That's why he said, this man is very close to my heart. When he looks at his inner characteristics, right, or he looks at his heart, what are, what are his thoughts are, right? So, God does not look at his appearances or the way we um, look outward, but God looks at our heart, right? So, you know what, um, <clears throat> Jesus also told this um, to the Pharisees, right? Can we go to the next slide? Right. So, he condemned the Pharisees saying they are whitewashed tomb. Have you ever seen a tomb? Yeah, so that looks like what you see in the picture, right? It's all whitewashed. It's painted beautiful outside. That's what Jesus called the Pharisees. So why do you think Jesus would have called them as whitewashed tombs? Because they were so good looking outward. Right? They, they wear a mask whenever they go outside. Have you, wear a, have you wore a mask? Right? So they, they also wear a mask. Whenever they go outside, they want to look good. right? They want to look very divine. Right, people, they want people to give them respect, but they don't care what God is looking at, right? What God is looking at is not how people respect you or what you do, right? But what God is looking at, what, what's in your heart, right? Inside the heart, there was so much jealousy, hatred. They were, they were, they were even jealous about Jesus Christ, right? So that's why when Jesus Christ was people, preaching and so many people were gathered towards Jesus Christ. They were jealous about him. So they were, inside the hearts, there was so much jealousy and hatred that made them to finally crucify Jesus. Right. But what, that's why Jesus called them whitewashed tombs because they were very good looking outside like whitewashed tombs, but inside there is so much stinginess, right? They're stinky inside. That's how a tomb looks, right? Tomb is look good, looks out, outward it looks beautiful, but inside it's stinky. So God is looking at a person's heart, right? To give this title, right? If you want to be a special friend of God, God, you need to know that God is not looking at your outward appearance, he's looking at the heart. Um, there, there is a sermon on the mount. God said, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will, does anyone know the all those blessed statements? There is this particular verse, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. So if, if a person is very pure in heart, they're going to see God. That's what Bible says. Jesus Christ said this. So now let's talk about David, right? Uh, <clears throat> can you go to the next slide? Yeah. So this is a picture of David. One of the characteristics that maybe we could observe in David's life that God is looking at, right? You know, one of the characters that David did was he spent personal time with God when nobody is watching around. Right? When, when nobody's there, right? When, though, when nobody's there around him, he spent personal time, personal relationship with God. So this is where he is taking care of the sheep. That's what his duty, right? He, for David, 
at the younger age, he didn't go to school like us, right? For us, our duty is to go to school, do our studies. Like for David, he had, he, he had to take care of the sheep. That's the duty given to him by his family, right? So he went alone to take care of the sheep. But in, during those times, he didn't waste time, right? He said, oh, okay, nobody is watching me. I'm, okay, I'm going to do my own things that I wanted to be done, right? He didn't say, oh, I'm going to spend my time happily, have all the fun stuff. No, but since nobody is watching me, right? So he had this personal connection with God. So that's the time he, he has, he plays his instrument, harp instrument, right? He, he has his lone time with God. Now, how many of you, right, spend your lone time or personal time with God? You don't have to raise hands, but you can answer this question in your heart, right? When am I spending some good quality time with God, either in the morning or in the evening, whenever it's your best time that you're active, right? Are you spending some quality time with the word of God? Because God's word is, is like the letter he has given to us, like the mail, right? This is the, this is the letter he has given to us, right? So are we taking time to read this letter, the beautiful God's word, and spending some quality time with God having some personal connection, right? Whenever something happens to you, you share with your very close friend, right? Whether you spend something exciting over the summer break, who do you tell first when you go to your, when, when you go to your school, when you meet your friends, right? You go to your close friend and say, hey, no, do you know what happened? I did this in my vacation. It was super exciting fun. Right? You tell to your close friend, right? So you share things with your close friend. Now, is Jesus your close friend? Is God your close friend? You can share things like how you share things with your close friend. You can, you can share things with Jesus. So for David, he had nobody around because when he's taking care of the sheep, he was alone. His only close friend was Jesus, God. He had a very personal connection with God, right? That's where he wrote the Psalms. God, how I take care of these sheep, you are taking care of me. The Lord is my shepherd. How I take them to the water, still waters. Lord, you are taking me. You are taking me by the still waters. All right. So he wrote those psalms during that time where he had some personal time with God. So, so, so let us um, remind ourselves, right, when um, that we need to have some personal time, quality time, spend quality time with God. Um, is is someone when you when you wake up in the morning, right? You can ask this question to yourself, right? Is someone asking you to go have a prayer time, go read Bible, or you are doing it by yourself? The if you are doing it by yourself without even somebody telling you, which means that's really good. You are having a good connect with you because it's coming from your heart. If it's really coming from your heart, nobody has to tell you. Right? So remember, God is looking at your heart. If, so if it's really coming through your heart, right, then God knows that, oh, this person truly loves me. Right? That's why even nobody has to tell him to pray or read Bible. He's doing it on his own. So that's the kind of a personal collection that God is expecting from all of us. Let's go to the next slide. So another, another um, characteristics that I think maybe that made David to earn the title, right? he stood up for God at all times. So this is a picture where Saul, Saul was the king, right? And there was a Philistine army, right? And there is a very popular leader in that Philistine army. 
I know you might have all guessed who is that person. In that Palestinian army, there was one person who is a special leader who is leading the Palestinian army. Goliath. Right, yeah. So you can look at this picture. He's so tall. He's so powerful that every soldier in Israel, right? When we talk about soldiers, they are they are strong. They are well built. But every soldier in Israel was really afraid of him because he's around nine feet tall. That's so tall and he's so strong that every soldier was even scared. and uh, you know what this goliath was doing he used to come at the place where they all gathered the israel army and the palestine army all gathered he used to come there and he used to you know blaspheme the name of the lord and he also used to uh, curse israel right he used to curse israel and he used to curse israel's god but none of the soldiers would could we even thought to stand up against that person right they were like okay he is talking about someone why should i go now and get myself into trouble that's what they might have thought right why should i go there he's so tall so strong if i go there he's going to kill me why i should get myself into trouble right but it, it like it happened like this for so many days he would come each day the Goliath would come each day and he would curse the Israel's army and he would curse Israel's god you have no brave people here to fight against me you are all cowards that's what he would tease them right but one day david came right david's parents asked him can you take some of these your your brothers david's brothers were all in the army right so they came and the, the david's parents told him can you take these food to your brothers right and ask him how they are doing right that's a, that's that's how david came there right they want they sent him they sent david not to fight but they sent david to take food and also ask about enquire about how his brothers well being is so david is coming and he also heard the same thing from goliath but this time he could not stand right he could not he could not wait hearing these how come a person who's who's not a god's child but he's cursing god and he's a cursing god's people he could not stand against that right so immediately he said no god is with me right let's go to the next slide so he said god is with me right he is he has so much confidence in god right he wants to stand up against this evil man he wants to stand up for god so he went to saul and said this person is nothing we uh, we have god on our side right but everybody looked at him he was a very small boy right everybody looked at him oh you cannot do this but he said god is with me i can do this and he also faced goliath he said to goliath you are coming with sword and big big weapons but i'm just coming in the name of the lord right and you all know the story what happened right in the first shot itself he killed goliath right he do the sling the the first shot hit this goliath for it he fell down he took a big sword and killed goliath right so he we all know he really stood up for god i'm not asking you to you know fight with someone because when i say stand up for god it doesn't mean that you have to go fight a battle or fight a enemy right because that's in the old testament old testament god allowed battles but in new testament it's god is asking us to love even our enemies so when when it says standing up for god right it's it means standing up for god through our actions 
so how many times we have stood up for god like when everybody in your class or everybody does something which you think is not right have you stood up against that have you stood up for god saying that oh, even the old class is doing it or even all my friends are doing it i'm not going to do this because i'm going to stand for god If you have ever done that, I'm, I'm not asking you to raise hands or when all these questions you can ask to yourself, right? Saying, oh, I, have I really stood up for God, right? All my friends, it could have been an instant where all your friends have compelled you to do, hey, come on, it's just one thing or one lie, right? It could have been a simple matter of lie. It's just one lie, right? Everybody's telling a lie. Why can't you tell a lie, right? Have you st- stood up? against because it's not as per the word of god so one of the reasons that god has to choose david is because he stood up for god so uh, one of the characteristics let's move on to the next slide that i'm thinking why god have chosen this title is because he trusted god's promises all the time right so uh, so this is this is a instance where um, god through prophet samuel anointed david right he anointed david to be the next king right any guesses how many years he has to wait to become the king after david was anointed how many years he has to wait to become a king any guesses yeah he, he has to wait for around almost 20 years to become to be to become a king right so so during those 20 years right he has to go through a lot of struggle saul was looking to kill david because he knew after david killed goliath everybody was praising after david right and and people in israel looked at him as a next king right saul also knew that right so he also looking to kill david and david has to leave his family leave all his friends leave his even his best friend right do you know who is david's best friend is jonathan right yeah. so he has to he has to leave his best friend he has to leave his family and he has to flee away because Saul is trying to kill him right and he is moving from one place to the other place hiding in caves right and but Saul if wherever he is going Saul is coming after him he is chasing and coming after him so this is a instance where you would see that Saul was chasing after David but he was so tired and he is resting in a cave and Saul didn't knew that David was hiding in that cave already right so now David has a very good chance you know he can kill David he can kill Saul here because Saul did not see him he could kill Saul and he could become the king the very next day but he so much believed on god's promises right he said if god is going to give me something he's not going to give me in a shortcut he's going to he's going to give me directly right so if if i want to achieve something i don't have to do something bad or something evil like killing a person to get what god has promised for me that's 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 the main reason he said i'm not going to kill saul kill a anointed person saul because god has anointed him as a king has kept him as a king so i'm not going to kill that person to take the kingdom instead i'm going to trust in god believe in god wait on his promises 
and it will fulfill so what do you think might have happened if david killed saul that day he would have become a king immediately but he would not uh, he would not have been a successful king or he would have not earned this title of a man after god's own heart his kingdom would have gone like other other kings right his name would have been vanished now we are all talking about this special person because he trusted so much on the god he did not take any shortcuts sometimes trusting god or standing up for god could cost us something right we may have to give up something or we may have to even lose our some of our close friends because you are standing up for god and that person is not in agreement with you so you you could you, you may lose something it could cost you something but it's really worth it at the end for david it costed him like 20 years he has to wait 20 years but at the after that there was a beautiful life a glorious life was awaiting for him so if you if you wait on god's promises if you wait on god's commands god as god as something very blessed blessing or blessed life for you sometimes when you talk to your friends right th- there could be cases where that's not in agreement with god's word right some of your um maybe in lessons or something would not in science or something you might have something contradicting with bible right in that time what do you believe right do you trust god's word or do you trust the things that your friends or other people say so to earn this title we we looked up few characters of david right so for the next few minutes let's close our eyes this is this time is very important right we're going to examine our own heart we're going to talk to god take this time to talk to god if you want to earn a title if you want to be a special friend special person for god god you, you need to know that god is looking at your heart at jesus is saying these words a tree is known by its fruits and out of your heart the mouth speaks so is your heart is towards god if not let examine ourselves lord let me truly love you let me sincerely love you lord you sang a beautiful song right as the deer panteth for the water my soul is longing after you god let's let's tell these words sincerely sincerely to god god i truly love you as the deer is looking after water right my soul is longing for you you alone god are a special person in my life there is nobody else in this world i'm going to give importance rather than you you are you 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 are the first person in my life can we tell that to god and this has this has to come from your heart because god is looking at your heart so tell this from your heart lord you, you are all, you are a special person in my life you are first in my life and i'm going to share all the things like how i'm sh- going to share with my special friend or my best friend you are my best friend in my life
Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you for speaking these words to the kids, Lord. Let them take these words into their heart, make you as a true special person in their life, and let them have a blessed life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, kids, so I hope you enjoyed this message and you're going to you know, put God first in all the things you do, right? Will you? Good. Okay, see you next week then. <laughs>